Hello, this is Ron, the colorblind artist. Like a lot of people, I started drawing at a young age. First with just pencils, and then trying other mediums like ballpoint pen. I even dabbled with colored pencils, where I realized I just couldn't see colors like others could. But I didn't let that stop me from doing art. I picked up some art pens and kept on drawing. Lots and lots of drawing. From furry little creatures with furry little heads. Native Americans and even some celebrities. Just about anything with a face. I had become very proficient using cross hatching and pointillism. But with all these drawings, my art was missing one little thing a little bit of color. So I went out and bought me some paint. I painted some animals and I painted some landscapes. And I made tons of mistakes. But I'm going to keep on painting and practicing until I conquer color and finally create my masterpiece. So thanks for watching. Sit back and enjoy the video. Okay, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, this is going to be my very first oil painting ever. Uh, it was my birthday a couple days ago and my wife gave me some uh, oil paints and some oil paint brushes. I've never even opened these yet which is a little silly, but uh, I'm not even going to practice. I'm just going to jump right in and do some oil painting. I have been painting acrylics now for about two and a half, three years maybe, but uh, never oil. Uh, this ought to be a fun one. I have uh, used this image before. I've done it in ballpoint pen, and I've also done it in acrylics. Now, when I did this painting with acrylics, I only used two colors. Look on the color wheel. Complementary colors of blue and orange, you mix them together, you should get a brown right here in the middle. And of course, black and white. Uh, the problem with that is, well, it was just practice, but the problem with that is you get a little narrow band of color that you can use from orange through brown to the blue. I'm going to be painting this one with the three primary colors, uh, neutral brown, and of course, black and white. And if you use the three primary colors of blue, red, yellow, I should be able to use all the colors in the color wheel uh, and with the black and white. So, all right, so uh, let's open up our brand new paints and uh, get the painting. Okay, to start this painting off, I started by painting all the black stripes using a burnt sienna and a titanium white mixture. And all the colors I will be using for this painting are basically the same colors I use when I do acrylics. Uh, they are alizarin red, yellow medium, ultramarine blue, those are my three primary colors, and my neutral color is a burnt sienna, and of course a Mars black and a titanium white. And later on in this painting I realized that the uh, Mars black oils does not cover nearly as much as the Mars Black in acrylics. And if I had known that, I probably would have just painted these stripes black. In the background here, the leafy area, I used uh, a little mixture of the medium yellow and an ultramarine blue. And to desaturate it, to kind of brown it out, I used a burnt sienna. Uh, didn't want the leaves looking too bright green. And for the log hair that the tiger's head is rusted on, I used a little bit of burnt sienna, a uh, little bit of alizarin red, some yellow medium, and some titanium white uh, to lighten it up a little bit. Now the blue area here I'm painting is actually the tiger's white fur. I found out in earlier paintings that uh, blue makes a good uh, shadow area for white fur. Uh, because if you was to just put some white f paint down on top of the, the white canvas, of course, you wouldn't be able to see it. So you got to put a darker color down there. Uh, paint strokes, same direction as the fur, and the blue seems to work pretty good. And for the brown stripes or the orangish, brownish color of the tiger, I'm just using a combination of the three primary colors, the alizarin red, yellow medium, ultramarine blue. Uh, we all know if you mix the three primary colors together that gives you a brown. 
and then you can just add your titanium white uh, to lighten it up and once you get that first coat of brown that you'll be using it's easy to kind of push it towards either the blue or you can push it towards the yellow or you can push it towards the red depending on what uh, you think you might need and you can change the values with the uh, Mars black and the titanium white. I've heard other artists call this stage of the painting the ugly stage and uh, yeah it's true it's, it's kind of ugly but it is uh, necessary to get to the final painting. It's sort of like building a house. You, you don't want to just start with the roof and the trim work. You've got to build the foundation first and build up from there. Finally, uh, putting the first coat down on the eyes and the nose. And that does it for the first day of painting. I let this painting set about six days to dry so I could put the second coat on. It was a little bit tacky to the touch, but I thought it was good enough to put a second coat on, uh, still in a learning process. Uh, but I, I couldn't wait six days to paint something, so I actually started two other paintings in the time I was working on this tiger painting. You didn't have to do that with acrylics. You do some painting. 20 minutes later, it was it was dry enough for the second coat. As far as the leaves, the background, my main concern was I, I didn't want any really sharp lines. Uh, I wanted to kind of soften everything up and I wanted to keep the values close. Like if you go to scale from one to 10, one being pure white, 10 being pure black, I didn't want anything at a one or anything at a 10. So I got my values in the background uh, about a probably a five to about a seven. And all the lines, I just wanted uh, nice soft lines and that kind of blurs the background and it gives uh, the painting like a, a sense of depth. I learned two things while doing the background on this painting. One is you had to be really careful about accidentally touching a different color. Uh, for example, the green next to the orange on the tiger head because it just instantly uh, mixes in with the other and kind of smears. And two, it was really nice and easy to uh, kind of soften up these lines. So I, I got to give that advantage to oil over acrylic, but it was really, really easy to get these lines in the, in the uh, background nice and soft. And here you can see I have a, a stick. Uh, normally I kind of rest a pinky on my painting if it's an acrylic because it's already dry. I found out early on that you cannot do that with oil. You can't touch it. It takes four to six days for these paintings to dry. So I got that stick there uh, in my left hand and I'm just kind of trying to keep my right hand with the paintbrush steady. And I got to make a slight correction from what I said earlier about changing the values with the titanium white or the Mars black. That's not always necessarily the case. Uh, of course, I'm not a professional artist, and this is just the way I have to do things since I have trouble seeing some of these colors. But you can also change values using the, uh, the ultramarine blue or the yellow and sometimes even the red. It depends on where my end point is if it's pure black that I'm trying to get to I will use the black uh, but sometimes it's just a darker shade then sometimes I'll just use the the ultramarine blue or the blue that I'm using and on the other end of the scale if I want to push it towards the white if I know I'm going to pure white then I will use the titanium white to uh, to lighten up the value but sometimes it's just a lighter area I can use some of the yellow, depending on if it, to me, if it looks more yellowish, then I will put the yellow and titanium white to lighten it up. And sometimes it's more pink, then of course I'll use a little bit of my red and a little bit of the titanium white and lighten up an area like that. Comparing black in oils to black in acrylics, uh, 
I've noticed a big difference. Uh, the black I'm using here, and of course this is the first time I've done oil painting, and it can be just the, the brand of paint I'm using, but the black is really not that strong. Uh, to get it to the point I'm at now, I probably have three or four coats of black in these black areas of the tiger. And if this was acrylics, I got some permanent black and some Mars black that it's one coat and it covers. So it's a little more forgiven using these oils in black. But when you're using acrylics and you put that black in there, you got to be very, very careful when you're using acrylics in a permanent black. I have a bad habit of not painting loose enough, and I got a habit of kind of like being repetitive, sort of like the rungs of a ladder. They're all evenly spaced, all exactly uh, parallel, and when you're painting fur like this, it should be more random, uh, a lot more loose. Uh, you, you, of course, when you do your paint strokes, you want to do your paint strokes as the same as the fur. The fur is going side to side, like right here on the uh, outside fur. You you don't want to use your paint strokes going up and down, but uh, that pretty much goes without saying. Up to this point in the painting, I really haven't noticed any difference in technique or how you actually lay the paint down onto the canvas uh, versus doing it with acrylics. The only problem I've really had so far is how much paint thinner I need to put to this oil. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was, I'm guessing that after a few paintings and a lot more practice, I can figure that out and I'll know exactly how much paint thinner to put in it. And uh, I'm sure once you, like the first layer, it should be thinner, I'm thinking. And the more layers you put on, maybe the, the paint gets thicker and thicker. And I'm just hoping in time that's something I can, I can master. If I was to give anybody advice that is new to painting or has trouble seeing colors like I do, I think the best advice I could give is don't go out and get one of them kits that have like 30 different colors in it. First time I did that, I tried to do a painting and it just turned into a big brown blob. But rather, I would start with the three primary colors, red, blue, yellow, and I'd practice mixing your secondary colors where you get your green, your orange, and your purples. Uh, and also, if you mix all three of them, you get your brown in there. And I'd start with that, and I would do paintings with just those three colors, and then later on, I would introduce titanium white, do a couple paintings with that, that way you can change the value to make it lighter. And then eventually I'd move on to adding the tit or the uh, black and then a maybe like a burnt sienna, like a neutral brown color. But really, any brown should work. Here uh, I'm working on my most favorite part of any painting are the eyes. Uh, usually the bottom part of the eye is lighter than the top because it's catching some reflections off of the cheeks. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a tiger or a person. And the top of the eyes are darker because it's in the shadow of the brow. And when I do eyes, I always try to get these irises pure black and the little reflections in the eyes, I, I call them little moisture dots. I try to get pure white next to the pure black and it really makes the eyes pop. Uh, you have to put these little white dots in there or the eyes just look dead and just dull and they don't look alive. And this area here on the forehead between the eyes gave me a little bit of trouble. I thought I had my color correct on my palette, but when I put it on top of the paint, it kind of absorbed the color underneath it. So I did have to come back in here and adjust this a little bit, but no big deal. Yeah, if you run into a situation like that where you put some colors down and it just ain't quite right, it's not the end of the world. You're working in layers. You can come back in and say, well, why doesn't it look right? Well, it should look more orange. You know, your two primary colors, red and yellow, make orange. 
You can mix you up another little bit of color, maybe some titanium white to lighten it up if you need it. And then just come right back in with another layer and, and keep adding layers till you get to where you want to be. Here I'm uh, back on the background, uh, just changing some of the values on these leaves, making them a little bit lighter and making some of the other areas darker, trying to create a little bit more depth. And just still, I'm keeping in mind, I, I don't want any sharp edges. And I will come back in here and soften up all these edges. Uh, like you see up there in the top left leaf, it's really the hard edge. I will come back in here later and soften that up. I said earlier that I was working on two other paintings while I was doing this tiger. And I want to kind of give you guys a little sneak peek at what I'll be working on. I drove around my local area here. I took a couple snapshots. I wanted to do a landscape and I chose this photo right here and I'll be working on this picture. And I also got a picture of my granddaughter that's been sitting on our dresser by our bed for the longest time. And I thought I'd give this a try. So if you want to see how they turn out, just subscribe uh, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for me. And as far as the reference image I am using for this painting, uh, this is from a photographer I found on DeviantArt. I'll put a link to her uh, webpage down below. This is Waxus, and she is from the Czech Republic, and she is a zoo photographer. And now to finish this painting off, I'm just going to put on some whiskers here using this 3-inch, I'm not sure what it's called, uh, but... I would suggest to do a little bit of practicing before you start laying these whiskers down. I really, really enjoyed uh, doing this painting in oils, and hopefully I can do many, many, many more paintings in oil. So take care. Have a nice day.